Hey there, this is Andrew, and uh, since I recently got to go to the Seattle Vault Tour and get a uh, Vault Master deck, I decided I'd go ahead and show it to you on stream. I have uh, three more of these, although uh, one of them I'm giving to a friend um, who is giving me one back after he goes to a Vault Tour, and the other two I haven't decided uh, what schedule I'm going to open them up on. It would be cool to open up a suite... Uh, set up here that would be playable for either Archon or Alliance, but my impression so far is that these are under the power curve, especially compared to Winds of Exchange. You know, a random Winds of Exchange deck I think is likely to be stronger than a random Vault Master deck, um, but hey, there could be outliers, and there's some cool combos. It's, you know, part of the joy of this, and uh same with like unchained decks is that you're getting to see combos see cards work together that normally don't and so uh there's <clears throat> just an element of novelty and excitement there that's fun all right so yeah so this is the only vault master deck i've opened so far it is called martialis y of the <laughs> 39,285th vault it's Mars, Sarian, and Star Alliance, and I'll show you the sad part right away. This part I, I just thought, oh no, that was the first card I saw uh, on the list, and I thought, wow, that's not great. A Hestatus Raptor. So Hestatus Raptor, for those who don't know, is a five-power dinosaur soldier with one armor, and before it fights, you may exalt it, and if you do, you deal one damage to the creature. It's fi it fights for each amber on friendly copies of this card why why word it that way why copies of this card because you're guaranteed to get multiple copies so why why is this disappointing um first off i should say a five power one armor body is not it's something right i mean there's a reason bellator and warrior is a great token choice for sealed alliance but at the same time uh it's not great it's not a, really a win condition and so um, so having, so where Bellator and Warrior, on the other hand, all your token generation is producing those, so you can have these big reap out turns. In this case, it's just, did we draw them? Um, and yeah, you're guaranteed, I think at least three, but I got seven. <laughs> now, I actually, I'll show you the rest. I played it and it's, it didn't work out so bad. I'll explain why I think it worked out okay. Um, and the first reason is, um, there's some reasons I'll show you later as we go through the deck. But the first reason is, I actually think in a random matchup, you know, I open a random deck, you open a random deck, having staying power on the board is actually a, a positive thing. Um, the problem is, in Archon, people are going to bring decks that... Uh, are edge cases that um, maybe don't need to be on the board at all or try not to be on the board um, or have a quixel stone or, or any number of, or just have a lot of board clears but in general I do think you know in a random sealed matchup being on the board is, is a positive thing um, okay come back to some other reasons later but yeah seven uh, status raptors <laughs> if you're a collector who wants a seven uh, status raptor vault master deck uh, I got you covered. All right, now we have uh, Laposaurus, and this one got a drop hip on it. Laposaurus is from Mass Mutant, no, it's from Dark Tidings. Four power beast with two armor taunt, and when attacking it, enemy creatures exalt themselves before the fight. That's fine. It's a little taunt, and actually that can be nice here, not to protect the Hestatus Raptors, but some other things. Cornic and Octavia, five power dinosaur soldier with one armor, action capture two okay that's a little amber control odawak is always great stop the steal if uh if it has an amber on it and it captures one when you play it um and then um monument to octavia is a uh, an okay artifact it has a friendly creature capture two but if octavia is in your discard pile they or capture one if cornic and octavia is in your discard pile Capture two instead. Uh, that's fine. And then Paxoriana is great. Two amber and then ward each creature. And what I found that worked well with that here is I 
tended to have a lot more creatures than my opponent. <clears throat> and so Pax Ariana was working in my favor. So that was pretty good. All right, let's check out the Star Alliance. Uh, so first off, we got Medic Ingram. Play Fight Reap, uh, heal and ward something. Trigon is okay. After Reap, discard the top card, resolve any pips. Then we've got Subject Kirby. Subject Kirby is great here because it helps us get... We, you've seen we have a lot of creatures, so there's a lot of targets for Subject Kirby to play a, a non-Star Alliance creature. <clears throat> and then uh, CPO Zytar gave us some enhancements, which we already saw some of, and a four power, one armor body is not horrible. Then we've got Navigator Ollie, uh, Play Fight Reap, look at the top three cards of your deck, put them back in any order. This card never does what you would hope. <laughs> um, because if you, unless you have draw, actually, was there draw in here? Yeah, there's not actually draw in here, but, uh, you know, if you can do that and then draw, it's great, but just usually, if I'm playing Ali, I'm going to draw three cards at the end of my turn anyway. We've got a couple of the robot upgrades. So Pyro, who's Splash Attack 3, and Expo Rover, who's Skirmish. They actually ended up pretty interesting. I was able to put them on a, a good candidate. And then Quad Recorder is nice uh, to increase opponent's key costs. That's great. Peace Accord, um, I ended up actually being the one to destroy it, so it worked out definitely not in my favor, but it's an interesting card to have around for sure. Uh, when you play it, each player gains two. Um, the next time a player fights, they lose four amber and Peace Accord is destroyed. And then a uh, couple uh, actions in here. Survey, which helps a little bit with deck uh, filtering, just a little and Sabotage, which increases key costs for a turn. Then in the Mars, we've got Glyxal Proliferator, uh, which there's some good stuff to put back with this if you can fire it off. So that worked out pretty nice to have. Needs to be on a flank to work, though. Uh, Dominator gives us a big, big taunt and uh, got a draw pip. And then Resonator ends up being really good uh, in a big board deck like this, get it on the board, get it taunted behind the Dominator, uh, ward it with Pax Sariana, and uh, this thing is probably staying and probably having two neighbors. So uh, it effectively ends up increasing key cost by four. If you combine that with the quad recorder, you're uh, potentially increasing key cost by seven for a good chunk of the game. So that worked out pretty strong. And then... Um, and you can see how having like a bunch of five power one armor bodies actually can help contribute to that. Then we have Collector Worm, uh, two power five armor beast. After it fights, you put the creature it fights into the, into your archives. Both creatures have to survive. That's a parenthetical text they've added uh, with the new sets. Um, that's very helpful, although the truth is it, it did always work that way. Um, Biomatrix backup. Uh, ended up actually being really nice on the Nizek Resonator. Um, and then let's see. All right, let's look at some actions here. Uh, Deep Probe is is really great. Love it. Uh, choose a house, reveal your opponent's hand, and discard all creatures of that house. I actually had um, previously scooped up my opponent's Time Traveler and was able to let it go back to their hand and then Deep Probe it. Uh, which was pretty cool. Um, Mars first, great for the Glyxal Proliferator, also good for the Collector Worm. Some good options there. Uh, Mars needs Amber with a Damber Pit with an, a Damage Pip, rather. Hard to complain about that. Uh, so almost guaranteed to slow steal at least one Amber, uh, but likely to do better than that. And the last action here, Martians make pet allies. So this is a a rare card, when you play it, you reveal your hand, you purge each revealed non-Mars creature, and gain one amber for each card purged this way. And in, in uh, the game I played, I was able to purge several Hestatus Raptors that way for amber. And in fact, at one point, so that same turn where I let the Time Traveler out of my archives, I took a Hestatus Raptor back just to feed the Martians to make bad allies a little better, a little more. So that ended up pretty funny. Um, and that actually works pretty nicely. So you're thinning out your Saurian, 
uh, getting back into your Mars faster. And then a um, couple of artifacts here. We've got Crystal Hive, which if you're sticking on the board, uh, turns your Reaps into pretty insane. And then Invasion Portal, um, which just helps you cycle back into Mars a little faster. So all in all, I didn't think this was awesome, but it definitely could like stick on the board and do work. It's that kind of deck. How many pips do we have overall? Like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine amber pips, which is really not very high. So this needs to be on the board to do work. But if you can stick it, then hey, it does okay. Not a ton of amber control, but the key cost increase um, is not nothing. So yeah, it was fun to play. I don't anticipate taking it to a vault anytime soon. Uh, ironically, I guess. Um, we'll see what happens with the other ones uh, as I open them. If you aren't familiar, I should have just said this earlier, if you aren't familiar, the whole premise of the Vault Master decks is it's a, it's a brand new set that you can only get by going to a Vault Tour, um, but, I mean, you can only, the only primary distribution method is through Vault Tours. You can buy them on the secondary market for sure. Um, but uh, there's no new cards in the set. There are only um, cards that already existed in previous sets, but they're kind of mixed and matched. And I'm impressed like with the overall feeling of balance. I, again, I, I said I think it's generally a little under the power curve compared to, say, Winds of Exchange, Mass Mutation, or Coda. Um, maybe, maybe a little similar to Coda, but I think not quite there. Um, and, uh, yeah, but it was still, it was fun. It was fun to play, fun to just have a new different experience. So, um, that was Martialis Y of the 39,285th Vault. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. You'll get out there and forge some keys.